I got into media, um, uh, second, I got into advertising first. I was in a client service person at Red Sky. Then after, you know, I was an account intern, I was an account executive, then I was an account manager, and when I was an account director, I felt I wanted to do something different. And so I moved from Red Sky, which was a client service role, to Macan to do a media director role on strategy. Um, and I think the good thing that has happened for me with WPP is it offers the opportunity to move across uh, dis uh, disciplines. And so I found myself in media, somehow challenging at first, but I liked it and I decided this is what I wanted to do. I think there are three key ones that I would like to speak about. One is the rise of influencers and influencer marketing is a very key role, uh, for, uh, tool for marketing. And, you know, influencers are doing a very good job, but also, you know, it's a, because it's a new thing in our market, it's not controlled, it's not structured, we don't have the tools to really measure the impact to help us on planning. You know, if you're planning for TV, you have tools, you have data, you can actually really know what, you're, you know, what station um, has how many viewers or readers. And, you know, influencer marketing, while it works, we have to figure out a way of making it, um, measuring it and planning better because we know, I'm not sure whether you've seen the information, but Odipo Dev did some research and 42% of influencers in Kenya are fake engagement. 42% have fake engagement, meaning it is just bots or something, right? So while it's a very good trend, the how is very important for everyone in the industry. Um, and I think we are trying, you know, when you see a local company like Odipo Dev getting into that space of measuring and tracking, then we are actually get using technology to fix the problem. The second one for me is the power of video. And I won't even speak much about it, but the power of video is the fact that if you send a WhatsApp today to two or three groups that you are in, by end of day, they will come back to you, right, as video. And so what WhatsApp has allowed most Kenyans to do is to actually access video easily and with uh, using less data, right? So if you look at, you know, Safaricom will give you, uh, or Airtel, they'll always give you data, WhatsApp for free. So you're actually able to access a lot of content on your WhatsApp phone. So while Facebook maybe has 6 million or something uh, people, WhatsApp has maybe more than 11 million Kenyans. And video has become a very big tool for Kenyans to first communicate to set the agenda on um, politics. You know, there are some media houses that send like, like a briefing, a short briefing on video and just goes around on video. Um, video is big for influencers, for products. You know, I'm sure you've seen all these trends of unboxing and all that. But video is also very big for entertainment. Sometimes all you need, you know, life is tough in Kenya. You just need a break. And when you need a break, video is very good for entertainment. So all the rest of all these comedians who just sent short clips, I'm sure over the weekend during the counting, you saw how many videos we got of what was going on with, you know, with Kenyans and just making fun of the full uh, of the program. But video is a powerful tool of communication. And beyond using TV commercials is what can clients and brands use video for that if you get into the WhatsApp, if you're being shared on WhatsApp, then you've made it on video and the quality of what you want to share. The other one for me, it's technology and using technology to not just um, as a separate arm of marketing, but as a part of marketing. Um, how do you use technology to be more efficient? You know, I'm sure you've seen bots um, that um, actually we use to communicate. I'm sure you know Zuri by Safaricom. And you can chat with someone who's not there, you know. I use Booking.com a lot and they have such a good way of communicating without you having to talk to anyone. So how do you become efficient as opposed to having so many customer care people sitting? How do you use technology to become efficient? Two, how do you use technology to close the loop in marketing? And there's a product, you know, we have with one of our partner agencies called uh, Optimus uh, by Squad Kenya. And it's a product that allows us, after you uh, advertise online, you close the loop in terms of getting the leads, managing those leads, and actually driving conversion. So technology is able to do all that for marketing. Um, technology has brought the rise of e-commerce, you know, um, and because we're in the era of immediacy, you know, we, that's a very big trend today with consumers. I just want what I want today. I want to be able to call Jumia or Clovia or any other online pl platform and get my things quickly. But what, has, what is the base that has, uh, that has allowed that to happen? It's technology. 
Yes, so for me, those are the key three uh, trends I'd like to speak about. There are many more, but these for me are trends for now, but more so trends that are, that are going to influence the future. You know, I think technology is supposed to, should be at the core of what we do today. It's going to enable us to drive growth in the future. It's going to allow businesses to be much more efficient. Um, it's going to allow us to close the loop, track, you know, today we don't know how to, we don't track much of, you know, TV. How is TV impacting my product, which we call attribution? Technology is going to come in and help us do that. But more so, you know, for me is if you're a CMO or you're head of an agency, and or even you work at an agency or at the client and you're trying to embrace technology, learn. You know, I'm always online, I read articles, I do webinars, I sit with the technology team and I just try to understand, you know, what are they doing. And more so what I say, you know, it's very simple. Ask those stupid questions. Just ask them. They may sound stupid because you're like, oh, maybe this is so stupid. But you don't know technology today and this is the future. So ask those stupid questions. You know, I think, you know, agencies will always have a place, but it's important to shift our business to fit to what is today, right? So clients are looking to, control, to have control because, you know, if you look at digital media, it's no, it's, it can be, it can go um, wrong very quickly. So they're looking for control, so they take it in. But one thing you get at the agency that you'll never get at a client is the expertise. Because if you look at an agency like Mediacom, um, and we are a global agency, so we have expertise in Kenya and we have expertise in our global office. And this expertise is only in media. Therefore, we've, it's our core competence. So if it's a client maybe who's in FMCG, for example, their core competence is not media. Their core competence is whatever product they produce, right? So I think there's still space for agencies in this era. Yes, we need to step change ourselves. Yes, we need to change to fit to today's trends um, and client demands. But there's still um, space for the agencies in today's. For us, it's about how do you become an agency that gives value such that your client does not feel like you're not giving me enough value. I can do this in-house. It means you have to change the game and deliver more than what the base of media buying uh, normally has been. I think I have a couple of people, maybe two or three. I think um, I had a boss who, she was called Eve Onduru, and she's the first person who told me she thinks I can do good in advertising. And she set me off a path that I'll never have explored. Um, then there's my boss, who's my current boss, Barat. He's always been that person who pushes me to, you know, you know when you think your average is good enough, but your average is not really good, but it just keeps on pushing and, and, uh, and, sure, and that push has forced me to always check how good am I doing, you know? Am I just accepting average for myself? No, 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 I need to step change this, I need to do better. And the last person, honestly, is my father. And the reason my father is so important in my life is my father is the most calm human being I know, right? So every time I feel like an ad advertising can be hectic, so every time I feel harassed and hectic and confused and I don't know what to do, I call my dad. In about five minutes, I'm calm, and I know, okay, you know what, I can actually do this. So those three people for me are very important in my career. Empathy, you know, I, I say you must lead from the heart, you know. Uh, you have to lead like a human, you have to be human. You know, it's very sad that, you know, Harvard writes uh, articles on, and books about how to be human at work, right? And being human at work is all about leading from the heart. Be empathy, have empathy. When you're dealing with everyone you deal with in your office, when you're dealing with your partners, lead from the heart. And if you lead from the heart, you'd really, really ever go wrong. It doesn't mean that you're not tough. It doesn't mean that you accept mediocrity. It doesn't mean that um, you accept uh, disrespect. No, but it means even if those things happen, you're going to deal with them with empathy. And for me, that is very important. I really try hard, you know, to say people, it's about the freedom to be. 
you know, and it's, for me, it's giving them the freedom to come to Mediacom and every morning bring them their full selves to work and not feel judged and not feel uh, like I cannot speak up. So whether you're an intern or whether you're an account director or a media director, for me, your opinion is as important. And what we've tried to do is build a culture at Mediacom which says people first. People first is, is our philosophy. But people first means whoever, as long as you work here, your opinion is important. And there's freedom. Just speak up. So I speak a lot. I chit chat with my office mates a lot. And it allows for them to feel free to think, but more so free to share their thoughts with us. The app I use the most and that helps me, uh, app for, that help me stay up and, you know, with my day. One is Safaricom, you know, sending Mpesa, paying for that, paying for this, paying for that. Oh, this other person, oh, I forgot to give the house girl some money. Oh, I need to pay for that. And it really makes my life very, very convenient. The second one is the Stanbic one, you know, and I bank with Stanbic, yes. They're not my clients, but the Stanbic app has helped me a lot in just being able to do transfers and quick transfers even when I'm out of the country and it makes it gives me enough time to work in the office because those two apps help me become efficient um, there's an app I really like and I think you know if you're watching this you should check it out it's the McKinsey app it's a free app but the McKinsey app has a lot of content on every category on you know data uh, articles reports on different types of industries and you know, they just, every week they send me a reminder of what is new in their platform. And it enables me to know what is going on in the world, what is new, how are people using data differently, how are people using technology differently. So it keeps me informed in the simplest manner possible. And, oh no, there are five, I guess. Apple Music, why, as you saw, you know, I just had earphones. Apple Music, because when I'm really, really working, like when I really need to focus, Apple Music. I play some classical, I play some jazz, and I can work for seven hours, eight hours. Why? Because it helps me focus. The last one, WhatsApp. You know, I can speak to my clients, I can speak to my suppliers and our partners, I can speak to my team in one very easy to use platform. I have groups for my teams, we have groups with our clients. It enables quick chats, right? This is a very fast world we are in. And sometimes you don't need, you can't write an email and wait for the client to reply. You send one WhatsApp group, you send this message, they reply and you can get on with the campaign. So I think WhatsApp has really made communication quite easy, don't you think? Those are my apps. And I use them quite a lot. I think they're my top five apps. Yeah.